Oh, they're finally done with this intersection. Oh, thank God. No more light. Apologies make lousy parachutes. All right, welcome to the Little Over Basement. Why are we in the basement? Well, it's because my garage is a pigsty. It's just filled with camping crap, motorcycles. It's just, I can't even really walk around in there right now. Uh, my wife had gone camping at Babe's Ride Out last weekend while I was camping at Hammonette State Park. And I am actually getting ready to go to Laconia this week. And then she's going to be following me up there on Friday. So, yeah, it's a mess in there. So why are we in the basement today? Well, that's because my Senna has been acting like crap. The battery life has dropped down to about 15 minutes max. Uh, it doesn't like to connect to my iPhone. Uh, just all around not super happy right now with this here product. So this is the SMH5 Dual. My wife and I got this as a wedding gift. Uh, it was a nice introduction to actually having comms on the bike to speak to each other. I didn't think this was gonna enhance my rides um, as much as it has, uh, but I do have to say I am a convert and having comms while riding is a huge advantage. Uh, not only just to, you know, make it so that if we need to stop or if there is a problem, uh, it's easy to actually relay that to the other rider. That is a huge advantage. But having this to point out like, you know, oh, hey, there's a cute little doggy over there. Oh, or look, there's chickens and they're everywhere. Uh, make sure you don't hit them. Or, uh, hey, look at that house. It's kind of cool looking. All kinds of things. It's it's nice to actually like, you know, I don't know, talk to my wife while riding. I I didn't think that I was going to enjoy that, but hey, I do. But back to the problem at hand. The battery life has turned to shit. Yes, we could upgrade, but her unit is working perfectly fine. She gets multiple hours of talk time, music, and GPS on hers with no problem. So I'm going to buy a brand new one for myself and not for her. That seems stupid but I'm gonna buy a brand new one to replace a perfectly good working unit. Seems silly. So I've been riding around with this actually plugged into my pigtail on the bike through a USB to SAE uh, connector. And it, it's just annoying to have plugged in all the time. It, it just really is. It comes unplugged, It 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 uh, I, I feel stuck to the bike when I go to get off and I have to be all like careful and ginger and not like tear anything out, you know, and, and it's annoying. Uh, so my next thought was to actually Velcro a battery pack to my helmet. However, this here Senna is a very low draw unit and the power pack turns off. Very annoying. So that's out. And then I decided to find out if they actually sell a replacement battery for this. Well, Senna doesn't, but Amazon came through. As you can see, this unit is very small, which means it's gonna have a small battery. But this is the box that Amazon sent the battery in. I'm guessing it's because it's explosive, maybe? I don't know. Let's dig in. Ooh, not just Prime Day, Prime Days. And one of them is this guy's birthday. This, this seems ridiculous. So to get this apart, you actually need a T7 Torx bit. Uh, luckily, I have this Pittsburgh Perot 34 piece precision screwdriver set uh, that I got at Harbor Freight and it has served me very well. Let's take this sucker apart. Let's see what we've got inside. I have a feeling I'm going to end up dropping at least one of these things somewhere and it's just going to go. Wherever socks disappear to, that's where little screws disappear to as well. It's the same dimension. Oops. Remember to get that back in there. All right, well, there's our battery. Pretty sure that's the thing that's ruining all my rods. Now we need to remove the battery. I believe that it is got some double-sided foamy tape in there. So I'm gonna be careful pulling this out.
This little tiny thing right here is where it's connected. Let's see if we can get this out easily. Wow, this is really hard with my giant stupid hands. Oh, okay. Not as hard as I thought. Let's open the new one and compare. Okay, here's the old one. Looks very similar. Similar plug. Looks like it is set up the same way. Negative and negative are in the same spot. Positive and positive, same spot. As long as they're going by the same standards of red being positive and black being negative. But we'll find out, I guess. 3.7 volts. 3.7 volts. 500 milliamp hours. 400. So this one is going to have a little bit more capacity. And this one, if you can't tell from here, uh, is very swollen. So I'm assuming that is why it was not holding a charge. That is why it was giving me all types of problems and uh, just all around sucking. Um, so yeah, when these start to swell, they cause all types of issues. Let's put the new one in. All right, this part's very hard. There it is. Now, before we put it all together, we're gonna do a moment of truth. And we're gonna try to turn it on. See if this thing came with any juice in it. Oh, it came with some juice in it. Turned on. It's blinking red. And now it's blinking blue. Mm, still blinking blue. All right, so it turns on. That is a huge plus. That means that the uh, negative and positive are in the right place and we have power. Zang. So yeah, I need a little piece of double-sided tape to keep this thing in place inside there. Leatherman Raptor scissors. These things are amazing. Amazing. One piece of Gorilla double-sided tape and I'm actually gonna tape this into here rather than on the board itself. Um, I'm hoping maybe, maybe, that will actually uh, cut down on any issues where this battery will overheat and um, swell. Like this freaking thing did. Look at how fat that thing is. It's not supposed to be that fat. It definitely wears husky pants now. It is definitely hefty. That's not good. All right, this has now become the most difficult part. Jesus. Ah, that was difficult. I may have gone overboard with that tape. I may not need it so much. All right, docking procedure initiated. I don't know what the torque specs are for this, but uh, I don't care. Ta-da! It didn't catch on fire. Yay! All right, so the old fat and bloated carcass of the old battery is now out of my Senna SMH5 unit. Um, and uh, the new one is in. And uh, it turns on. That's pretty cool. It works. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go plug it in right now and leave it to charge. Uh, I wanna see if I can get a full ride, uh, even if it's just the 10 minutes to work and the 10 minutes back of it working. 
hopefully I can go for a longer ride tomorrow and I'll take you guys with me as I test it out and find out if uh, this solves my problem. I really hope it does because this is crap. And I'm really not as interested yet in buying a brand new communication unit uh, as I thought I was in a previous video. I think I was just angry. I was just anger talking. Maybe I was hungry too. I think I was hungry too. I was hungry and I was angry and I was disappointed in the Senna at that point. Um, for the most part, I'm pretty happy with having one, but during that video, I was, I was disappointed and hungry and angry. So yeah, let's go charge it. And tomorrow, spend some time on the bike. And look at that, we've got a full charge. Let's go ride. We are out here testing the new battery in my Senna SMH5 and I have to say uh, that I am uh, feeling hopeful. Uh, this morning I, I got on the bike after charging it all the way up overnight and uh, it turned right on, started playing my music. It uh, lasted all the way to work. Uh, when I got to work I left it running for about another 45 minutes so that was about an hour. And uh, yeah, so it's de not dead. It's not dead, uh, which is a huge plus, huge difference from when it would actually die on the ride to work, which is often less than 15 minutes. It would, it would be like eight minutes and it would turn off. It was, it was infuriating, infuriating. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm kind of impressed with the fact that uh, I did change out the battery myself with no issues and it's working. I know that sounds weird coming from, you know, a guy that uh, works on his bike all the time, but I just, I didn't expect the battery change to really just like work. I, I kind of expected get a get a battery that came from some, you know, rando place and that it wasn't going to actually work with the Senna product. Ah, uh, because yeah, Senna kind of is notorious for other things not working with it. Like, uh, you know, the device manager doesn't recognize Senna device at all, so I can't even do the firmware updates, if there even is one. That doesn't really matter. Uh, but it works, and it has been quite useful. I did not expect having a communication device would be as useful as it is. Um, really only specifically in respect to music and speaking with my wife. I really don't want to talk to anyone else while I ride. Uh, I don't take phone calls unless I, you know, I know I'm expecting someone to call me. Um, so yeah, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful that this is going to prolong the lifespan of this Senna SMH5 so that I don't actually have to buy anything newer or more complicated uh, because that's that's the way things are like they, they they just make things more complicated when they come out with the new products and and yeah it can be enticing to have all you know uh, you know verbal command only devices uh, which is the big reason why I was actually thinking about upgrading to the Cardo because uh, a bunch of people say that the voice commands are just so much easier on the new Cardo Pack Talks. Um, but again, I don't really care about being in a pack talking. I don't want to talk to anyone else. Uh, I just want to talk to my wife and I just want to listen to music and hear my GPS. That's it. That's, and this, this covers all of those things. You know, the audio isn't the greatest coming to these speakers, but it's not bad either. I can hear it. Uh, I can understand it. It doesn't hurt my ears. Um, it's got a volume control uh, that, that helps with that as well um, but yeah so new battery it's working it's working and uh, yeah uh, I am heading out for Laconia 
Motorcycle Week 20. 21. Uh, next Wednesday morning. Uh, today is uh, Friday. So this uh, will be the video that will be coming out uh, for my channel on Thursday at 6 a.m. For any of you that uh, actually care about a schedule. But yeah, I will be out cruising the back roads of New Hampshire, camping in the White Mountains, just all in all having a fantastic time. I'll make sure I post on Instagram that I will be heading up there. So if there are any moto vloggers or any people that I know up there that ride that want to try to meet up, we can make that happen. My wife and a few friends will actually be following uh, on Friday and they will be camping with me at uh, the Barn Door Hostel and Campground, one of my favorite places to stay in New Hampshire. Uh, it is in climber country, uh, Romney, New Hampshire. Uh, it is run by a fabulous man named Dave. Uh, he is an excellent host uh, and his, his, his whole family who helps him run it are just spectacular people. They have a, just a great business going on up there. Great vibe. Uh, love the environment. Uh, amazing, amazing ambiance in the hostel and on the campground. Uh, can't recommend them enough. Um, but uh, Wednesday and Thursday night, I'm going to be staying up in the White Mountains uh, off of the Kank um, by myself. Uh, and I will be joining my wife and our friends, which we're not sure if it's going to be three, four, five people uh, with her for that campsite. Um, but I hope, uh, you know, more people come because they're actually all people that I do enjoy riding with, even though I have the moniker of the Lone Wolfer. Uh, I do enjoy riding with some people, and uh, yeah, all of those people are possibly coming. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, but yeah, if you like this one, give it a big old thumbs up. If you have any questions or statements about, uh, you know, me replacing the battery in the Senna, or if you've done this in the past and have had uh, longevity from the new battery, I'd love to hear from you. Uh, and if you haven't subscribed, do it! You'll get to see more of the beautiful rides like this that I do along the Connecticut shoreline. So those are the Thimble Islands out there. People actually live on them. That's pretty cool. Anyways, rock on. Oh, that's